name is Jessica Kern. I will be your instructor this semester for Art 1210 Math for Visual Arts. In this welcome video, I would like to tell you a little bit more about myself and who I am as an instructor. But more importantly, I'd like to walk through everything that's required of you during the orientation unit of the course. The orientation unit of the course basically sets you up for success in the class. So after watching this video and completing all of the activities within the orientation unit, you should be in a good place to start the semester. So first and foremost, in order to get started in our class, you need to log into Canvas. This is a fully online class that does not meet on campus ever. You do not have to come to campus for anything, even testing. Everything is done through Canvas. So I've opened a new incognito window so that you can kind of see what happens. But in order to get to our class, you need to go to slcc.instructure, I-N-S-T-R-U-C-T-U-R-E dot com. And you're going to log in using your My SLCC username and password. If you prefer, you can also go to slcc.edu. I'm going to have to move my little thing out of the way. Hit My SLCC and then choose Canvas. Or for those of you that might be your very first semester, one of the first websites that you will log into is my.slcc. Is it my dot or my SLCC? Let's try my.slcc.edu. And then you'll log in. And then from that portal, there will also be an option to get to Canvas. Once you successfully log in, you will, uh, you will get to the dashboard, and the dashboard should show all of your current classes. Immediately, if you do not see our course, either you're not signed up for our course and you think you are, um, or something happened and there was a glitch, and you haven't been added to our class yet in Canvas. So if you, if you are enrolled, if you go to my... Whoops my.slcc.edu and you look at your class schedule and you see that you are in this course. Um, if that's the case and you don't see us in Canvas, call the help desk at 801-957-5555 or if you prefer email like I do, it's help.desk at slcc.edu and let them know and they'll double check to make sure. Um, what happens is the college kind of like pushes updates periodically and every once in a while a student gets missed. Okay, once you have gotten to the dashboard for Canvas, you're going to find our course and click it. Yours probably says like Art 1210. I actually, let's go back for a second. I renamed mine and I like to color code things. Like I make all the, the college stuff that's always there gray or black. And then I color code my classes. Photoshop's always blue. Math for Visual Arts always a green color. I kind of like this new green color. So I'm thinking I'm gonna update um, the way that your course looks in Canvas for next semester. But to do that, I just hit the three little dots up here, and I renamed my course. I gave it a nickname, and then you can choose like what color you want. You can make it orange if you want it to be orange, etc. I think it was that one. Okay, go ahead and click on the course to jump onto the home page. You are seeing the course from the instructor's point of view, so it looks slightly different than what it will look like for you. For example, um, all of these links over here on the left-hand side that have little eyeballs next to them, I've turned them off because we're not using them, so you should only see a handful of links over on the top left-hand corner. While we're talking about those links, in Canvas we call those the tabs. So the, the vertical navigation column, we call that the tab. So if I say go to the chat tab or the Zoom tab or the announcements tab, that's what I'm talking about. You're going to click on these links in the top left-hand corner. There are two ways to navigate our course. I've created a visual home page. The course is broken down into three units, but it's really just two. Uh, there's an orientation unit, so right when you log in, the home page will say, here's the information for the orientation unit. When you're ready to do your coursework for the first half of the semester, which will be unit one, graphic arts math, you can click the little handle there, and it will expand a table that shows you all of the lessons. It makes a list of everything that you have to submit and when it's due. And the same goes for Unit 2, which is the second half of the semester. And really, it's like 60-40. So it's like 60% on the first half, then we take the midterm, and then 40% on the second half, uh, volume of coursework wise. Okay. The second way to navigate the course is to click on the Modules tab on the top left-hand corner. I'm going to go ahead and open that in a new window because no matter which way you navigate the course, whether you like the visual homepage or you want to skip it and go right to the modules tab, you are going to navigate the course through the modules tab. So when you click on modules, it will take you to the modules page. All of your modules should be expanded. 
and essentially we're just going to work from the top of the modules page to the bottom and content is grouped into modules. So the orientation unit is just one module. So you'll work your way from the top of the module all the way to the bottom. When you're done, you can collapse that module and move on to lesson one. Then everything that you have to do for the entire semester is listed in the order that you should be doing it. The benefit of using the visual homepage is if you're on, let's say, lesson six, and you're in unit one and you click on lesson six cost centers, it will still take you to the modules page, but it will jump right to that lesson. So you can say, I'm not going to scroll, I'm not going to have to, there's too many things on this page. It will take you right to lesson six cost centers, and then you can do your coursework for that. Before we get into coursework, I want to talk a little bit more about the information on your homepage, the announcements tab, and the syllabus. So if you read the homepage, it says, in order to get started in the course, click on either this link here, Getting Started in Art 1210, or the one down at the bottom half of the visual homepage. Essentially, if you do everything in the orientation unit, which is basically everything that I'm covering in this video, um, you will learn everything that you need to know to get started in our course. In addition to that information, um, there's some information about kind of me as an instructor and kind of how I want to be communicated with. So my name is Jessica Curran. You can call me Professor Curran. You can call me Jessica. I, I don't really have a preference. Um, I do have a preference on how you communicate with me, like the methods of communication. So we all have our strengths and our weaknesses, and my strengths in this class in particular are organization. I will get your grades back to you the day after an assignment is due, so it's due on Saturday. I'll probably grade it on Sunday morning. When you log back in on Monday, you will have all of your grades, and you'll basically have instant grades every week. My weakness is email. I am bad at email. I know that I'm bad at email. I get overwhelmed. I have five different email accounts. Um, so in order to combat that, what I ask is that you only send me email through the Canvas inbox if it is private and it can't be shared publicly. Otherwise, I would like you to use the chat. So I host all my online office hours through the chat. I will be logged in every Monday and Thursday from 2 to 3 p.m. for online office hours. So if we click on the chat tab, you can log in in real time and we can chat back and forth. But you can also log in anytime during the week and leave a message or a question. And if it is a question like, hey, this link is broken, or um, I'm having trouble with question six on the homework. This is the work that I did. What am I doing wrong? Um, share that in the chat because you might not be the only person that's having an issue with a link or something like that. Um, the only time I don't want you to use the chat is if it is sensitive or private and you don't want the whole class to see it. Then send a message to the Canvas inbox. So if I'm getting less emails in the Canvas inbox, I'll be better at responding to them. Um, also, I know that there's no scheduled time for this class, so I can't make you log in during online office hours. So let's say that you work 1 to 8 p.m. on Monday, so you can't come to office hours. You could log in at 12.30, post your question. When I log in at 2 o'clock for office hours, I'll answer it. And then you can log in at 8.30 when you get home from work, and you can have the answer more quickly than 24 to 48 hours if you send it to the Canvas inbox. In addition to the chat tab for online office hours, I will also host a live info session every Monday at 4 p.m., and that will be via the Zoom. And I haven't set the links up yet, but essentially you'll click on Zoom, and then on this first page here, you'll just see a list of dates, and it will be every Monday for the entire semester. And let's say it was next Monday, which is January 10th. Um, if you wanted to attend, you would click the one that says January 10th. And then you would log in, we'd launch a Zoom. Uh, for the live info sessions for this course in particular, essentially I'm going to review everything that you should be working on that week for the course, but I'll also answer any questions in real time that you have. You can post them via the chat if you, um, if you can't attend uh, the Zoom because these will be recorded, but also you can, at you can attend and you can say, can we work through problem six on the homework together? Um, or can we work through a couple example problems because I'm still kind of stuck even though I got 100 on the homework. Uh, I still don't want to take the test because I'm not confident yet. Can we work through some problems? But essentially those live info sessions will be dictated by whoever shows up. If no one shows up, I'll do a kind of a quick review refresher. Um, but it's not like a formal lecture. I'm going to record those for you and we'll talk about them when we get to course content. Okay. 
Um, the last two things that are on the homepage are I made a calendar that's printable for you and I highly recommend that you print it. Uh, if you click on it, it will open in a new tab and then down here in the bottom right hand corner you can download it as a PDF. I'll click, I think the video will put like a little circle around it. You can download it as a PDF and then you can print it. It is a good lifeline for this course because it outlines everything we will do, when we will do it. You can literally cross things off as you do them to make sure that you don't miss something. And then I want you to read the syllabus and I'm going to open that up in a second. I'm not going to read the entire syllabus to you. I'm only going to pull out the key highlights. But a syllabus in a course is your lifeline uh, for the entire course. And it outlines everything that you should be expected of. So you should be reading the syllabus. Or if you have a question, you should be referencing the syllabus. Before I click on that, though, uh, I want to show you the announcements tab. So if there's something that I need to share with the entire class that's not kind of built into the course, it comes up periodically, or you'll see when I click on this, there's a handful of things I always send at the beginning of the semester. I'm going to send that out as a course announcement. Um, I'll do two things. One, I will number them so that you know, like it, you'll know if you missed one. So if you read the first five, you're like, okay, now I need to read six, seven, and eight. Uh, eight won't be sent till next week. Um, but you should be reading them because it's important things. So, like last week, this week, um, I'm recording this on Friday, January 7th. Is today the 7th? Um, let me double check that. Yeah, I'm recording this on the 7th. I opened the course on the 3rd for you, so it was open a week early. So I sent an announcement out as soon as the course is open saying, hey, just a heads up, the course is open. I'm probably not going to be logged into the course because, you know, I'm not working that week. Um, but if you want to get started, if you want to click through and see what it's like to make sure this is a course that you want to attend by all means. And then I kind of outlined what you should be working on. But as I do this, I'm realizing that I didn't change this date. So let's go ahead and change that. See if I didn't change it somewhere else. Hit and hit save. The problem with that is now you're all going to get an announcement that I updated <laughs> an announcement. Um, so just make sure you're reading all of those. It has information about the course, anything that is common. If I find information about scholarship, I'll send it out. I'll send information about registration, that kind of stuff. So the first thing that you always do every time you log into the course is to hop onto the announcements tab, see if there's anything new, and read it, and then get started with your weekly coursework. Now that we've covered the home page and the navigation for the course, let's jump onto the syllabus, and let's talk about a couple key things. I, again, I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. Um, you can read the, the course description. I think it's, it's more effective to read the, the titles of the lessons to get an idea of what's going to be covered, but you can read the, the course description here. Um, there are no prerequisites for this course, but if you, if you took the math placement test and you tested into um, de de developmental math, sorry about that, um, I recommend that you take this developmental math before taking this course. The math that we do in this course is not difficult, but it's also, it requires you, if I tell you what's 8 times 7, like immediately you should know. Um, that it's 56. And if you don't immediately know that it's 56, uh, you might want to take the remedial math first. Okay, we'll keep going. Students usually want to know what course supplies need to be purchased, and because this course has no required course supplies in the bookstore, that usually panics some students. Uh, but there are no supplies required in the bookstore because there are no textbooks required for this course. Everything that you need to know for this course is embedded into it. The only things that you have to buy are a ruler and a calculator, and you can buy them both at the dollar store as long as you pay attention to what you're buying. You need a ruler with inches, and those inches need to be broken down into at least 1 16th of an inch. Some rulers will go down to 1 32nd, which is fine. It gives you more than what you need. But if you have like a big kind of cartoon uh, ruler and it only breaks it into like half inches or quarter inches, then it will not work for this course. If you don't know what your ruler has, take a picture of it and send it to me and uh, let, let me look at it and I will tell you. 
in addition, you need a calculator, but you don't need like a fancy like TI whatever um, calculator. You just need one that has at least nine digits on the screen. So I'm on a Mac right now, and if we go to the calculator, this calculator has way more than nine digits, right? So I could write all of these digits across, this calculator would work. Um, again, it's like if you have, like I had a student that had like a giant, like each number on the calculator was like an inch and a half wide kind of cartoon <laughs> calculator. Uh, that calculator only had seven digits, which made answers on the second half of the semester wrong because we're going to have long decimals that can't be rounded and that kind of thing. And so type a number, doesn't matter what number, and make sure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine digits will appear on your calculator. It doesn't have to be nine digits and decimals, it's nine digits in addition to the decimals. Um, but as long as your calculator has nine digits, you're good to go. Okay, so my grading policy in ART 1210 is that everything is due when it's due and you're expected to turn your work in on time. However, um, I will allow late work as long as we're within the unit. So as long as we're still working on unit one, you can turn unit one coursework in late. Late work gets docked 10%, whether it's one minute late or one week late or one month late. Um, and I think that's pretty generous because it doesn't lock until the end of the unit. In addition to that, um, you can earn extra credit in this course. Throughout the course, I will offer extra credit. If you complete the extra credit, it's worth 1% onto your final grade, and you can earn up to 5%. So if I offer 10 extra credits and you do all 10, you're still only going to get 5% onto your grade, but you can do up to 5%. 5 you can choose to do more if you want to. Uh, for example, we're going to learn about die lines to make packages, and then the extra credit will be like design a package. Uh, and if you color in your die line and you design a package, then you can earn 1%. That is the number one way to increase your grade in Art, uh, art 1210. Like 1% for doing probably maybe a half an hour's worth of work is significant in the course. The way that the course grading like is calculated is based on grading category. So you are going to have homework and tests for every lesson. Homeworks have unlimited attempts and literally give you the answer. The idea is that you will practice until you can get all the answers correct and you feel confident moving forward with the lesson and then you'll take your test. Test seems like a really strong word because it's more like a quiz, but everything in Canvas is a quiz, so I can't call it a quiz. Your exam is a quiz, your homework is a quiz, your test is a quiz, but essentially your homework, unlimited attempts, it's meant to help you check your learning and if you're struggling to know where you're struggling and then to visit me during office hours and then your test is really like a quiz and then the exam that we'll take at midterms is really like a, an accumulative test for the first half of the semester so your homework is worth 15 percent of your grade there's no reason that you can't earn all 15 percent of that because worst case scenario it gives you the answer the point is not to submit the quiz copy all the answers and then resubmit but um, there's no reason that you couldn't keep practicing until you can get all the answers right. Tests are worth 35% of your grade. This is a general education course, so it requires an ePortfolio assignment, which we will talk about in a different video. Essentially, your ePortfolio assignment is worth 10% of your grade, but also that professionalism is the orientation unit. So the orientation unit and your ePortfolio combined are worth 10% of your grade. And then your midterm and final exam are worth a combined 40% or 20% for the midterm and 20% for the final. If you would like to earn an A in this course, you need a 93% or higher. You can see the grading breakdown here. The only students that do not pass this class are the students that don't submit their coursework. If you submit everything and you do it thoroughly and on time, uh, you will not earn less than a B plus in this class. It, it's basically impossible because I allow you to fix and resubmit. I will practice with you over and over again before you take an exam. Uh, the only students that don't pass are the ones that stop turning their work in. Okay, I think, I think that's all that I want to review with you about the syllabus. Um, what's more important to me is that you read it on your own and that you print the calendar so that you know how to stay on pace to, to finish the course on time. Okay, and the last thing that I want to talk about is actually getting started. So let's put this into student view. And let's reset student view. 
So on your first day, you're going to log into the course. You're going to want to get started, and you'll click either this link here, this link here, or the modules tab to navigate to the orientation unit, which is the first module. You will notice that if you start scrolling down on the modules page, that everything is grayed out. That is because everything is locked until you thoroughly complete the orientation unit. If you look closely at each item within the orientation, it will tell you what you have to do for it to be considered complete. So it says view, but I want you to mentally change that to read. So you need to read the overview page. You need to read this page. So the first five pages, you're going to read all of them. And then you're going to move into the submissions for the unit, which are a quiz on getting started, uh, which, by the way, there's no time limit on that. So I would recommend before you even start the orientation, go take the quiz and have it open and read the questions that you're looking for. These questions are highlighting what I feel are the nine most important things about the orientation unit. And so as you are going through the unit, you can take notes on things that you find important that, that are important to you personally, but also you can look for the answers to those questions on the quiz. The quiz has unlimited attempts and they expect you to keep taking it until you earn 100%. And then there are some more activities, but I want to click through the, the orientation with you. So you'll see, let's open this in a new tab. You'll see that when I get to the overview page, it basically says these are all the things that you have to do in order for the unit to be considered complete, which is what I just told you in our video. And that the reason we're doing that is because we are going to achieve these learning goals or these learning objectives. When I move on to the next page, if I go back to the modules page, you will see that now I have a green check mark on unit overview and because I moved on to the next page I'm also getting a green check mark for getting started how do I get started in R1210. What you want is to see all green check marks all the way down the right hand side as soon as you see all of those um, everything in the course will open up and then you can work your way through lesson one. So let's, I'm not going to read the pages, I would like you to read the pages, but let's click through it together. So on getting started, it basically says these are all the things that you need to do to get started. It's kind of, um, it's kind of like an e-learning department, minimum requirements that I need to present. But if you're watching this video, you can kind of skim through it because I've basically covered it, especially this page here. Um, the next page is what does it mean to take Art 1210 online? Um, does this course have a lot of technology in it? You need to have basic understanding of computers. You need to be able to operate your computer. Um, and all the minimum requirements are listed on this page. Uh, so take a look, kind of scan through it. Most importantly, in taking an online class, it requires you to be self-driven. I can't make you log into the course. I can only kind of give you suggestions on what to do and when to do it so that you're successful. If you're someone that needs to come to a physical class because you need the teacher to like kind of point at you and say, what do you think about this question? Um, then I recommend switching to the on-campus version of this course. If you're somebody that, you know, likes to work at 11 o'clock at night and you're really efficient and you kind of want to work on your own, this might be the section for you. Um, but at the very least, make sure you read through the, the activities on this page so that you understand what's expected of you technology-wise. Um, in addition, these are the technical setups that you need for the course. Essentially, you just need a regular computer, um, but in case somebody's working on like a 1996 Dell or something like that, or um, what was the gateway, a gateway computer, um, these are the minimum computer requirements. If your computer is like one or two years old, then it should be fine. And worst case scenario, if something doesn't work, just remember you can always come to campus and you can use any computer on any SLCC campus for this course. Um, one of the big questions I get is where do I go for help? So the visual art and design department offers tutoring but not for math. So if you want help, I want to be your first point of contact, but I don't want I don't want an email at 11:50 p.m. on Saturday panicking because something is due by midnight. Um, if you think that you're going to need help, do your work early in the week and visit me during office hours on Thursdays. Um, in addition, the college offers STEM tutoring at the Redwood campus. All that information is on this page here. And so if you think that you're going to need some extra help, you can, can jot that information down when you get to this page. So that wraps up all of the reading for the orientation unit. 
When you take the quiz, let's resume the quiz, I would like you to read through the questions and answer them. I'm just going to hit submit. You'll see if we refresh our modules page, we have green check marks all the way down through the quiz. After you take the quiz, if we hit next, it will kind of keep moving us through the, the module. Um, there is an introduce yourself to the class activity, which is the goals are kind of twofold. One is to get to know the other students in the class. Oftentimes, I'll get like a pocket of students from a specific major. So maybe there's a pocket of interior design students or a pocket of fashion students. Um, if you kind of see that, message each other through Canvas because you can help each other um, apply what we're going to learn in this class to your industry. Maybe you can study together. Maybe you have other classes together that you can meet up with after class and that kind of thing. Um, but the second goal is to make sure that you know how to use a discussion. And basically all you have to know is that when you are using a discussion, I do not want you to scroll all the way to the bottom. You can see some of your classmates have already submitted. I don't want you to submit all the way to the bottom and hit reply. What I would like you to do is get into the habit of reading the instructions and using the reply line at the very bottom of the original post. When you do that, and then you post your work, you will get what's called a thread. You'll have your, see I already did a little example here. You will get a separate thread. If you go to the bottom and you hit reply, your post gets threaded underneath another student's. And so then it gets weird if a student, if somebody tries to respond to example two to say, hey, I really like your picture or something like that, um, it gets mixed in with your posts and it just gets confusing. And so the only thing you really need to know about discussions is that when you want to make your own post, you use the first reply field. Do not scroll all the way to the bottom and hit reply. Okay, let's go to the next page. Um, there's an initial response activity. is something that I include in all of my classes. And essentially, I just want to give you an opportunity to ask questions if anything is bothering you. If you if there's something kind of eating at the back of your head and you're like, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, when you do this assignment, obviously you read through the page, but I just want you to say, I am comfortable with this course. I'm confident that I know how to get started with lesson one, or I'm lost. I have a question about this, this, and this. The only unacceptable submission for this activity is I'm lost and nothing else, right? So you need to ask questions, specific questions that I can answer. And what I'll do is I will, I will check this submission portal multiple times a day, every day for the first two weeks of the semester, so that if you have a question and it's preventing you from getting started in the course, um, I will answer it as quickly as possible. Oh, I just typoed that. I typoed it so bad. Didn't know what word I was using. Okay, there's two more activities that require a submission, and I just put that in air quotes because uploading a profile picture does not require a submission. What you need to do is click on your account up here in the top left hand corner, and then click, I can't because I'm a test student, but you should be able to click profile or something like that, and then it will allow you to upload a profile picture. This activity is only worth five points. It's not going to make or break your grade. If you didn't do it, it's not going to affect your grade in any way whatsoever. But if you do want to receive credit for it, I would like a picture that is close up, professional. You should be the only person in the picture. It should not be a cartoon. It should not be Bart Simpson. It should be a cartoon version of you. What I'm asking you to do is to put a picture up so that I can see what you look like. Um, and then I can start to recognize and connect your submissions with your face. And then if I see you on campus, hopefully recognize that you were a student in my class. There's no submission though, so just upload a profile picture, and at the end of the first week of the semester, I'll go in and grade that. Okay, um, and then the last submission required for ART 1210 is a link to your ePortfolio. Students at SLCC are required to use a Digication ePortfolio, so that's slcc.digication. Yeah. Okay, sorry. 
Um, so it's slcc.digication.com. When you get there, you'll log in using your my SLCC username and password. It auto remembered mine. Um, and then you need to create a portfolio. This page explains that if you don't already have any portfolio, there are resources for help. And during the first week of the semester, I want you to just create your ePortfolio, and I would like you to have a page for our course. That's all you have to do during the orientation. We will work on an assignment for ePortfolio, and it will be due at midterms. And then during midterms, you'll have to actually have something on the ePortfolio. But I want to make sure you have your ePortfolio link and that it works so that we can troubleshoot that now um, before your actual activity is due. On a side note, when you create your ePortfolio, some programs have created templates for you to use, and so I recommend using the template and then you can modify it to make it look prettier however you want. Uh, I work with graphic design and communications, so that's the graphic design AAS degree, the graphic communications AS degree, and the graphic communications certificate. So we have created templates for that. You can see it's this green, purple, and red one. A benefit if you are a student enrolled in one of those programs uh, is when you let's publish this. When you create your uh, e-portfolio, it kind of has a template for you. This is for the certificate. So a certificate only has like 30 credits in it, and it has limited general education. So when I come over here to coursework, you'll see that it only lists four general education courses. And when I click on quantitative studies, which is what ART 1210 is, you can see that I, we've even put information on here that, you know, you can use ART 1210 math and visual arts, but if you are planning to transfer to a four-year college at any time in the future, you should opt to take a QL math course instead of a QS math course because a QL math course is a higher level transfer math course, but it has extra information specifically for you. Um, it also has goals, learning outside of class, it has information. But if you look at it, this is like what the outside world would see of your ePortfolio. If you unpublish it and you're in edit mode, there's all of these grayed out pages that have way more information about the program that might be helpful for you. For example, if you're doing the certificate, there's a graduation map page which outlines the classes you should take during your first semester and your second semester. And so you could say, oh man, I'm only registered for two of those classes, let me let me register for one more, so at least I'm I'm kind of staying on pace for graduation. And there's additional information, like the in this case, a certificate is stackable credentials. So this stacks into both the graphic design program and the graphic communications program. And so there's information about that, like what's the difference between a certificate and AS degree and an AS degree, and kind of how that goes together. And and if we go back, let's look at the graphic design AAS because Art 1210. Um, Art 1210 Math and Visual Arts is a math course for AAS degrees. I don't know why it's not loading. So let's look at the graphic design AAS. You can see that um, the coursework for that is listed for, is a little bit more than the certificate, um, but it's still limited because it's for the AAS program. Again, when you click on quantitative studies, it says, you know, ART 1210 is perfectly acceptable for the, the quantitative studies uh, requirement for the course, but we also encourage Math 1030 or higher if you plan to transfer. Um, AAS degrees are workforce degrees, so this one has a um, tab about um, jobs and internships and things like that. Um, there's a networking group that you can join if you're a graphic design student, and then there's a graduation map for that. Um, it also talks this is probably too much of a tangent. All of the templates for the graphic design and communications program also talk about the difference between creating an art portfolio and creating a general education portfolio. So you are required for, for visual art programs to create a portfolio at the end of your program, but that's an art portfolio. The digication portfolio that you're making is a general education one, and it's just different. And so there's information on that. And so what I would like is if you already have an art portfolio, I'm not going to not give you credit for your e-portfolio assignment, but I really would like you to have a digication one because it messes with um, it messes with data for the college. Um, specifically, general education courses are required to have e-portfolio assignments, and if you have an account in digication and 
you submit the assignment for our class, your name can be randomly pulled to look at it to kind of do assessment on that program. And if your name is randomly pulled and you did yours on Weebly or you did yours on Adobe Portfolios or something like that, it will come up as you didn't do the assignment, even if you did the assignment. So please use education for general education and use any other art-based portfolio for your student and your professional art portfolio. Okay, that is enough of a tangent on that. After you submit your link, so we'll start the assignment, we'll submit the link, the link, pretend it is an actual link. And then the last page of the unit is basically a recap of everything that you did and the accomplishments that you have. When you are done with this, you can see visually at the bottom here, all of, you can't see if I touch my screen, um, all of the requirements are complete. They're all green, but also if we refresh our modules page, you will see that all of the activities are now complete and all of the lessons for the rest of the semester are now unlocked. Okay, this video is getting long, so the last thing that I will talk about is how a lesson is set up because they're all set up the same way. A lesson has a lesson page, which has all of the learning resources for the page, whatever that happens to be. And then every lesson has at least one homework and one test. Sometimes there will be two homeworks or two tests, but at the very least there is one homework and one test. Homework you get unlimited attempts on, tests you only get one attempt. The idea is that you will go through the lesson, you will see what the goals of the lesson are, you will complete the lesson, and then you will do your homework and your test. The, the lessons are kind of written in, they're on slideshows on Google Drive, but they're kind of written like a book. And so if you click through resolution and image size, you can see here. You can put it in full screen mode if you want, and you can kind of read through the lesson. When you are done, um, you can choose to watch the lesson. So I will record every lesson for you, and it will appear as a video down in the recorded lesson section of the course. Um, I will record those lessons before 8 a.m. the week that we are scheduled to work on a, uh, a lesson. So if we go back to the course homepage, week one, which is January 10th through 15th, we will work on lesson one and lesson two. So by 8 a.m. Monday, January 10th, the lesson, the recorded lesson, will have a video under it for those two. I might work ahead, I might not, but at the very least, by 8 a.m. on Monday morning, the week that we are scheduled to do a lesson, those videos will appear. In addition, I will host my live info session every Monday where you can come and ask questions and we can practice problems. When you are done either reading the lesson or watching the lesson, whatever your preference is, you will complete a homework. The homework is a quiz, so you will take the quiz. And to Canvas, these are written answers, even though to us they're numbers. So this first question is, if an image is 5.5 by 19 inches at 72 ppi, how many pixels is it both horizontally and vertically? So when you enter your answer, you need to enter it into whatever format is described. This is not the right answer, but it's the right format, right? And you need to make sure that you follow that format or Canvas will think it's wrong because you spelled a word wrong or you entered it wrong. So if the answer was 1,000 pixels by 2,000 pixels and you put 1,000 by 2,000, Canvas might not recognize it as the right answer even though it is the right answer. It's not for this problem, but let's pretend it is. Um, so when you are doing your homework and your test, make sure that you're following whatever format is provided for you. The commas matter. The periods matter, how you spell the words matter. Um, that's the pros and cons of not having to pay $150 to log on to a third party website that they pay millions of dollars for and they use the same textbook at hundreds of, of different colleges. So what I would like from you is to do your best to make sure that you enter these values in the format listed. When you submit your exam, your, your quiz, the homework will literally tell you, did it not like that I didn't answer any of the questions? It has filled in. We'll leave it for a second. When you submit, what will happen is the Canvas will tell you which answers are right and wrong. 
if it is a homework, it will not only tell you what answers are right and wrong, it will tell you what the right answer was. If you see that the right answer was 1,000 by 2,000, but it was 1,000 pixels by 2,000 pixels, then you can resubmit your homework and you can fix that typo, type not wrong answer, or you can accept that it is correct and after the due date passes, I will manually check every submission. I really just check the wrong answers. Um, and if you have the right answer, but you entered it in the wrong format, I will override the wrong and mark it correct. Um, what will happen is, let's say that your homework, let's not say, your homework is due every Saturday. So every Sunday or Monday morning, I will log in and I will do all the grading. After I've checked every answer, fixed all the typo type wrong answers, um, I will send out a course announcement that says, okay, grading for week one is done. All of these assignments have been double checked. Now you double check that you have the grade that you think you should have. And if I missed fixing your typo, let me know. Please do not take the test uh, or the homework and then immediately send me a message that says, my answer is right, but it marked it wrong because I will double check it. I just won't do it until after the due date passes so that I don't have to do it over and over again. I'll do all of these submissions at once. Okay, I think that is enough to get started. If you made it to the end of this video, you're going to get an A in this class because you can tolerate my rambles and you're dedicated to watching the whole video. Uh, my office hours will start on Monday, January 10th. They will be via the chat from 2 to 3 p.m. Please visit me. And if you can't visit me, you can always leave me a message um, outside of class and I'll get back to it. Even if that message is just, hi, I wanted to let you know that I know I should be using the chat. Um, I would love to see that you're using it. And I will answer any questions you have.